Hey, what's up ladies? It's your girl Rachel L. Proctor and it is time for another Mentor Motivation Monday video. And I'm your girl Rachel L. Proctor and I am a entrepreneur, speaker, public servant, whole bunch of stuff. But I started a mentorship group last year as a place for women to come together and uh, just be supportive of one another in our goals and our dreams and the pursuit of those goals and dreams. And so each Monday... I do a video uh, based on questions that are submitted through the group uh, by group members and uh, I'm a little bit casual today as far as my uh, what I'm doing right now. It is actually Sunday night. I'm filming this of course in advance but I'm kind of chilling tonight. It's a very rainy night and um, the Cowboys just lost uh, <laughs> playoff game so I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit um, a little bit despondent right now, but we shall arise after this too. There is life <laughs> after a loss, so I'm chilling tonight. But I wanted to answer a question that comes from group member uh, Katalia, and she wanted to know how to reconnect with God. Specifically, her question is that she feels like she's lost her connection and um, just not she's just not able to get it back to where it was before. And so I thought this was a very important question because I know a lot of times we go, 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 especially in the pursuit of our dreams, in the pursuit of our goals. And a lot of times in all of the busyness and all of the things that we're doing, we can tend to lose that connection or lose that time or a lot less and less time with God. Um, and, you know, in order to be able to have the time that we feel we need to pursue our goals. Um, and so I wanted to to address this question really quick. And one of the first things that I want to say about this, if you're in a place to where you feel like you've lost your connection with God or you're wondering how you can reconnect with God to get to a place where you used to be or get to a place that's even better than where you used to be. The first thing that I want to say about that is you've got to identify the things that are standing between you and God. And so if you feel like there's something in between you and God and you're not at a place to where you used to be, generally there's going to be something that is standing in your way. Maybe there's more than one something maybe that something is a someone it has a first and a last name and again whenever I found myself feeling distant from God or feeling far away from God generally it's the usual suspects that are kind of hanging around there as far as different habits that I maybe have developed or different thoughts or actions or even things that I'm entertaining or things that I have neglected. Um, you may have some of the same things or it may be different. But what you've got to do is you've got to take time to identify what is standing in the way with you and God. Um, look at how you're spending your time. Look at what you're spending your time doing. Look at um, that may be even require you to maybe write down how you're spending your time within the day. I know sometimes, especially when you're in the pursuit of goals and when you feel like you're very busy and you're very you have a very busy schedule, sometimes we can neglect prayer because a lot of times we have to feel like we're doing something in order to feel like we're making strides towards our goal. And so a lot of times praying or reading our word or just meditating or just sitting before God doesn't necessarily feel like we're doing anything or that we're getting anything done. But a lot of times sitting before God is one of the most important things that you will do in the pursuit of your goals. And so if you feel yourself disconnected as far as not spending time with God, um, and let me say this, if you are not praying at some point in the day, and I'm not talking about just, you know, kind of in passing, but if you are not taking intentional time to pray or read your word or just meditate on God or listening to some sort of edifying material, uh, even if that's listening to your Bible on your phone or praying, uh, praying, uh, you know, just, you know, as you're driving or just whatever it is, but if you're not making intentional time to spend with God and to actually connect with God away from everything else, then you are going to feel like you're drifting. Uh, and it, it's only a matter of time before you feel that disconnect and feel that void that only that time with God can fill. But again, I'll say this, once you've identified 
what that thing is or who that thing is or just whatever, you've got to admit it to the Lord. And the Bible says that we must confess our sins. Uh, anything that takes us away from God and causes that breach between and that separation between us and God is sin. And so um, there's a scripture that I want to give you all. And it's First John 1 and 9. And it's concerning this. And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness so again if you found yourself in that place you've got to first identify what is standing between you and God the second thing I want to say about that is once you've identified that you've got to realize that we live in a feelings driven society so everything is driven by what you feel but the what I want to say about that is we've got to take action once we've identified what it is, we've got to take action on getting that thing removed or moving that thing away or moving towards what we need to move towards with or without feelings. So again, let me say this. There are a lot of times that we we wait to feel like uh, doing what it is that we need to do to get back in right standing with God. But you cannot trust your feelings because number one, feelings are not facts. Feelings have nothing to do with God's word. Um, as a matter of fact, you're probably not going to feel like doing the thing that you need to do as it pertains to getting back in right standing with God. So you cannot wait to uh, feel like doing what you need to do um, because chances are if you wait to feel like it, you never will do it because feelings come, feelings go. And feelings can fool you. So that's why you've got to trust what God's word says, not your feelings. So whatever you feel or whatever you don't feel, you've got to trust what God's word says. And so, um, you know, again, we've got to identify what it is. And then once we know what it is, we've got to do, we've got to take action no matter how we feel. If you don't feel like worshiping, worship anyway. If you don't feel like praying, pray anyway. Uh, if you don't feel like getting up and getting dressed and going to service, get up and do it anyway. Again, it's it's going to be nearly impossible to do anything in your own strength. That's why you've got to ask God to help you. Not wait till you feel like it, but ask God to help you when you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And so God will help you. God will give you wisdom. God will give you strength. God will give you peace to move forward. Uh, and what he what you need to do if you ask him for help. And so Psalms 50 and, 50 and 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. So again, we've got to identify what it is that's keeping us uh, out of alignment with what God has or causing that uh, wedge in between us and God. Secondly, we've got to take some action, even when we don't feel it, even when we don't understand it necessarily, or even when we don't want to let go of things. If God shows you what you need to let go of, you've got to ask him for strength to let go of those things that are causing a disconnect between you and him. Because a lot of times we are afraid of what people will think about us. We are afraid of what uh, our friends or, or, or people that we're in relationship with will think about us, but we have to place value more highly on what God thinks about us in our relationship with God more than our relationship with people. Again, it's important to have relationship with people, but that should not be your priority. Your relationship with God should be your priority. And I believe when you seek God first, all of our relationships, everything that we need, every dream we're pursuing, every passion that we have for anything in this life will eventually fall in line and God will anoint those things and God will bless those things when we put him first and when we put those things in perspective and priority in our life. So the very last thing that I want to talk about as it pertains to reconnecting with God if you feel like you're you there's a wedge in between you and God and that's going to be to surround yourself with things or people uh, that encourage you to stay connected with God. So you've got to examine your life and you've got to, again, look at people. Remember I talked about it first, identifying those things that are stopping you. But I want you to now identify people that will help you to live up to who you are in Christ. Again, we all struggle with things. We all struggle with staying consistent. We all struggle with praying when we need to or reading our word or being as committed as we can be. 
But it's important in all of that, even though we know that we struggle with things, it's important to not become complacent. And so we've got to um, realize, and there's a verse that I want to share with you all too. It's Proverbs 13 and 20, and it talks about fools and the wise are known by their companions, the people that we associate ourselves with. So you've got to find people and pray for God to place people in your life that are going to help you and encourage you to walk with God. And so, again, that's even with people, it's also true with things you read, music that you're listening to, things that you're watching on TV, social media, uh, what type of entertainment that you choose. Again, you're, you need to find environments that encourage you to move closer to the Lord. Again, um, that may require you to say no to some people, at least maybe even sometimes just for a season or whatever, whatever that time is. But sometimes if there are people that are discouraging your walk with God or hindering your intimacy with Christ, uh, and sometimes those can be very well-meaning people. It's not always that they're bad people or malicious people, but sometimes, again, people will, will, um, vie for your time and that is when that is time that you need to be dedicating and consecrating yourself to God okay and so um again we need to make sure that we are have people that are surrounding us that encourage our walk with God and if you find that there are people that um discourage your walk with God and that don't encourage you to spend that time with God or don't encourage you to pray but try to take you away from that then that could be one of those people that I talked about in the very beginning that are that are causing a wedge between you and God. So just be prayerful about that uh, because you don't want anybody or anything in your life that's going to keep you disconnected from God. Um, and again, having that alone time with God, having that alone time with yourself, uh, just to pray and reconnect to God, listen to his voice. It's so important that you make time for that. I know many of you all are mothers, your wives, your business women, you, your, your career women, you have things going on. We all do. But a lot of times our day can go much smoother and things can fall in line more when we take that time at the beginning of our day to spend that time with God, asking God for direction, asking God for his plan, not giving him our plan and asking him to bless it, but asking him for his blessed plan from the very beginning of our day. And I guarantee you when you take that, even if it's just, even if you start with just 15 minutes every day, I'm not saying that you have to go and tarry for two or three hours every day and start off because sometimes we'll, we'll try to reach for these things, trying to make up for where we feel like we should have been. But I want you to, regardless of what you feel like, just start, just do it. Even if that's 10 minutes in prayer or 15 minutes just having that quiet time or uh, reading your word or, or whatever it is, but start somewhere. Again, you've got to, um, if you're a music person, keep keep you a playlist of music that inspires worship when you're on your way to the car and you're driving in your car, have that worship music playing or, or a sermon or something that's going to encourage and edify your spirit. Um, so, you know, because you're going to constantly be bombarded with people and noise and media and images and just all sorts of stuff. So you've got to be vigilant about protecting your mind and your thoughts and the things that you feed yourself throughout the day. So again, I would just suggest if you feel like you're so far away from God and you, you need to reconnect, just start with little things. Like I said, just beginning your day though, the very first thing, let it be, don't let it not be you checking your phone, rolling over in your, you know, in the bed and checking your phone and checking your email, but giving praises to God and just getting up and, and giving God the praise and opening your mouth and opening your heart to receive what God would have for you and asking him to order your steps for that day. But start with little things. Don't wait to feel like it because chances are you will not feel like it. The enemy's not going to let you feel like it. The enemy's going to try to condemn you and make you feel bad because of the disconnect. But the devil is a lie. So you can do this. You can reconnect. You can get to a place to where you're, you know, where you were once were with God and even sometimes exceed where you were with God. But you've got to start even if it's a little baby step. And one thing that I wanted to share with you guys is a new tool, um, is a new tool that I found and I really, really like it because one of my goals 
this year was to commit more scripture to uh, to memory. Hold on, let me see if I can find uh, see if I can find this app on my phone. But it is called Scripture Typer. Hold on, y'all. I'm getting getting some messages. Let me see if I can. It is called Scripture Typer. And it is a Bible memory uh, system. And so it actually, you can actually type out the scripture, but it helps you to um, memorize the scripture by typing it out, like typing it out, um, you know, first letter, the first letter of each word of the scripture. And you can memorize it in any version um, of the Bible that you want to. So that was one of my things. So that may be another thing for you to consider is, again, committing more scripture to memory. And again, it start with one scripture. I'm not saying you've got to memorize the whole Pentateuch or anything like that. Uh, in the next month, but just pick one scripture, especially a scripture that speaks to where you are spiritually in a scripture that reminds you of the power that you have in Christ and who you are and just whatever situation or issue that you're dealing with, pick a scripture that deals with that and commit that scripture to memory. Um, I, I can't tell you how powerful that can help you to become when you begin to commit God's word to memory. So again, that, that app that you can put on your phone is called the scripture typer. I'm sure there are some other apps similar to that and I will also put that um, I'll put that scripture I mean that app in the comment section below again uh, but I'm gonna wrap up with that guys and I hope that that helps you a lot um, if you're watching this again for the first time uh, and you would like to be part of the mentorship group there is a link below in uh, the in the uh, the note section of this video here on YouTube and you can actually subscribe and join the mentorship group by following that link in the comment section and we have a Facebook group that we uh, that are very active in and, and you'll get all my emails and so forth also be sure to check out Emerge University um, that link is also in the bio uh, in the comment section below um, for my coaching I do one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, as well as I have a business course, 30-day business school. If you're interested in starting your very own business, um, I give you tools and tips that you will need to be able to do that. And we actually have some more courses that we're getting ready to launch as well. And I have, a, like I said, I have a few uh, coaching spots left that are available. And last but not least, if you have not downloaded the Emerge Online Devotional app, please be sure to do that as well. Um, that app is available in the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. And it is an app where I send out daily devotions each day. Let me see if I can find it here on my phone. So, yeah, Oop, it's kind of hard to see it, but there we go. So, yeah, the Emerge Online Devotional app and... There, I send out daily devotions. I send out timeline graphics. There's music. There's videos. There's access to all my past broadcasts. Just all kinds of stuff in there for you all. So, yeah, ladies, that's going to wrap it up for today. But I hope you guys have a blessed day. And please be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know if these videos are helping you. Um, let me also know any other topics that you guys would want me to chat about. And uh, all right, ladies, that'll do it. Well, I'll holler at y'all later. Peace out.